Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and someone who I haven't made a video on in quite a while is someone called Roger from Mud Fossil University. Now obviously Mud Fossil University is not a real university, it is just a YouTube channel, but it is quite fitting that it's not a real university as it talks about a lot of stuff that isn't real. Anyway, the video that we're going to look at is a video titled Another Unexplained Anomaly Unless You Have Mud Fossil Eyes, and I have to say, I don't want mud fossil eyes. I feel if I had them, I'd just start seeing a whole lot of stuff that doesn't exist. As I showed, there are giant creatures that are all over this earth. And this is a hair follicle from a very large creature. There's where the erector pillar muscle went. There's the sebaceous gland right there. There's the hair shaft. And this is the root, including the vein and artery. No question that is a hair follicle from, it has to be a very large creature. Roger, no, 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 no. You've got it wrong. Clearly, that's a fossilized onion. See, I can do that too if I just throw away my brain. It's not that difficult. Obviously, what's going on here is he's found yet another rock which looks vaguely similar to something that you might find in a creature, just a lot bigger. So Roger has thought, ah, if it looks like that, well, then that is what it must be. Obviously, he hasn't thought about all the flaws in this because it turns out that you can't just scale up creatures and expect them to work in exactly the same way. The reason why certain things work the way they do is simply because of the size that we are. Like if humans got too big, then we simply wouldn't be able to deal with all the mass that we have. The same goes for other creatures as well. Now let me show you something else. What I just showed you are these little tiny fibers that come up through the top. And there's where the emphasis is right there, which makes your, your bones attached to a tendon and then it goes to your muscle so you can move your bones around. Wait, that wasn't what you just showed us. You were showing us something that you thought was a hair follicle. What does that have to do with muscle tendons? Like, did he just randomly forget about what he was talking about and decided, oh, I think I was talking about muscle tendons, so let me talk about that. And here I thought sometimes my videos were a little bit too scatterbrained and disjointed. All right, these are all tendons. I mean, one of them is literally a hair follicle. Now, I'm not a biology expert, but I'm pretty sure that a hair follicle and a tendon aren't the same thing. And this is a gigantic tendon fibril structure. No, it's rock. I've already seen this photo presented by the Mudman research guy. Just because something looks vaguely similar to something else, that does not mean that they're the same thing. So there's tendon balls down in the earth somewhere. And these are the fibers that come out. Now let me show you something else. Okay, what I want you to pay attention to is that is the tendon anthesis I showed you with the ball and all those little straps coming up. So don't forget, there's the ball with all the little straps coming down that attach to the ball. Now, so those balls that he's referring to, I'm pretty sure are representations of different cells throughout the muscles. In fact, if I had to guess, it's probably a representation of how those cells are dispersed throughout the muscles. And because there's a little word down the bottom called time, which has an arrow, I'm guessing that this is how these cells change with time. I'm not an expert biologist and I don't have access to whatever book that he's reading from, so all I can really do is guess. However, there is something that I do know about biology, and it's actually really funny because he's been talking about balls, and something on that page actually does have something to do with balls. <laughs> you see, SOX9 is mentioned there, and there's actually a gene called SOX9, which produces a protein which is responsible for balls. I'm not quite sure of all the biology behind it, so there might be a few things that I'm not quite getting right, but I can assure you that SOX9 is definitely responsible for balls. If it isn't, then blame Forrest Valkai. So yeah, I just find it really funny that he's actually kind of right, but also not really. <laughs> We're going to look at this again, and that's the ball. All the little straps come up, and there's a couple of main stalks to come in there to support it with nutrition. Okay, so that kind of looks like it might be a picture of some meat or something. And the thing is, you can't see those cells with your naked eye. I looked, and all I could find is, here's this microscopic image, and it has something to do with a SOX9 messenger cell or something like that, but doesn't point out where the SOX9 messenger cell actually is. So don't forget, we're looking at all of these little fibers are the same fibers that come up. There's going to be a ball down, deep down inside there that connects to all that because they are tendons. No, even if you're right, you would still be wrong. The balls should be everywhere. It doesn't say that these balls just end at some random point in the muscle because it's just a representation of certain types of cell. 
At least that's what I'm getting from it. Sure, the SOX9 Plus cells probably don't extend too far into the muscles, but there's no indication that the SCX Plus cells don't extend far into the muscles. All right, now they're taking that ball right out of there as I showed you before. That's the tendon enthesis, it's called. It's an enthesis. And these are all the little tendon balls. Now they're gonna open it up, watch. Open that up. It's all the little fibers. That's not little like roots growing down there. Those are the fibers that are coming down from the tendon balls. There's a ton of them in there. How is he just getting the scale of everything just so wrong? Is he like basing his worldview off of like five images that he's seen? It actually feels like when it comes to the books that he references that he looks through it until he finds an image which he thinks can prove his point and he doesn't read any of the surrounding information to do with that. If he did read any of the information, he would know what those balls are called. He wouldn't just call them balls, he would call them SOX9 plus cells or whatever they are. My point is, if you've got science books, maybe actually read them instead of just looking at the pretty pictures inside. So anyway, that shows that these tendon balls, they're everywhere and they come in big globs and then the little balls are locked in and then the fibers come out, just as I showed you. N no, that's... Oh, that's not how any of that works. Like, he's saying that there's balls within balls, but, like, his pictures didn't show any of that. He's just making stuff up now. Is is he just trying to see how far he can push his ridiculousness until his audience goes, actually, sorry, Roger, you've lost me with that. Because I can assure you, ridiculousness is not the way to do that. Saying something actually sensible would completely baffle them. So this is the video John Hernandez sent me. He says, take a look at it, see what you think. These are the little tendon balls, and that's the cap of the tendon enthesis. And below there, right out of here, would have been the stalk that comes out. Isn't the tendon emphasis just where the tendon attaches to a bone? It doesn't necessarily mean that there's a cap or anything there. It's just the site of attachment. Also, one of the things I find kind of funny about Roger is he'll say, oh, that thing looks like this thing, so they must be the same. And you can go and say, but this thing has a thing that that thing doesn't have. And then he'll say, ah, but it's missing from that thing. That's why it's not exactly the same. That is one of the reasons why he's basically able to say that something looks like anything he wants it to look like, really. That's where the stalk um, would have come out. You see, so you, you can actually see the hole right there if it wasn't for his fingers. You see that? That's where the stalk went right up inside there. Here we go. How big is the stalk supposed to be compared to the... How big is the scale of everything even supposed to be? And here I thought Flat Earth has had a problem with scale. Turns out that when it comes to Roger, he just throws scale completely out of the window. All right, now under those balls are going to be the stalks. And there should be a couple of main stalks. Okay. So here they go. It opens it up. Open that up. All right, I'm going to stop real here and there because it only takes a second for him to see this. You see that? That's the main stalks right there. And that's where the main stalk came running out. Watch. You see these ones here? That's the main stalk and there's another one. And these are the little fibers. Then why is the hole so big if the stalks are so tiny? None of this makes any sense whatsoever to me. And actually, I feel like if I had a better understanding of biology, then it would make even less sense. All of these are the tendon fibers, and the main stalks are going to be down here. Whoops, actually, they're up here. You see that, that one right there, right, right there. So I actually just realized that he's been saying what he thinks these are, but I haven't actually explained what I think those are. To me, they look like stalactites or stalagmites. The ones that go down, I can't remember. And now that I think about it, I actually have an idea. It wouldn't be too hard to make something out of a rock and send it into Roger, and he would be absolutely convinced that it's whatever he thinks it is. Like, if you grew your own stalagmite or stalactite and send it into Roger, because I believe there's ways to actually grow them, then he would be convinced that it's like a hair or something. When in reality, it would just simply be something that someone made themselves. That's just an idea that I think would be funny. All right, this is a tendon, and this is a, this is where he was below that, and it broke right off where it came down, and he could see the the emphasis inside the bone basically. So he must have been in some kind of a bone area. I would I would assume. Okay, if that is the case, then where is the rest of the bone? Hell, where's the rest of everything else? It's weird that all of the evidence that he presents he claims is a tiny, tiny part of the creature, yet. 
there's no signs of it continuing on. Like if it were a creature that has been fossilized or something, then would expect to see more of it, especially the bone. Okay, my outstanding friends, I just want to let you know, there is a whole series of books a friend of mine wrote. Wait, I have never actually seen Roger from Mud Fossil University before. I've only ever seen his hands and usually a feather. We didn't actually see the feather in this video. We got mud fossils. Is literally the world is a mud fossil. The whole world is made of these mud fossils. He's got... Okay, if everywhere on Earth is a mud fossil, then that becomes a huge problem. Like, where did everything come from to cause everything to fossilize? And how did everything fossilize when fossilization only occurs under very rare circumstances? Me thinks Roger has not put a lot of thought into it. He probably thinks that a mud flood did it or something, in which case, where did all the mud come from? So I really, at this point, I am completely engulfed in the unexplained. Somebody, because, because all of this stuff is unexplained. Nobody can, there is no, consensus of opinion on this. There's just a lot of guesses and so forth. Actually, Roger, with a lot of the stuff that you look into, there is consensus. Like, geologists would be able to tell you that you are wrong. And actually, Roger, you're the one that's making guesses. Your whole channel is, oh, this thing kind of looks like this thing, so they must be the same thing. If that were the level of scientific rigor that scientists went by, then you might have a point. However, it's not. There are tests that the scientists do to make sure that they are right in what they are thinking. And then other scientists will come along and make sure that there's nothing funny going on. And, and the reason there's no consensus of opinion is there's no evidence. They won't examine the evidence that I am presenting, which is physical evidence. DNA tests, CAT scans, all of that stuff. I've shown it all over and over and over. And this stuff still remains unexplained. And it will always be unexplained because they won't look at what the explanation is. Except there's two problems with that, Roger. You're trying to explain stuff that has already been explained, so there's no need to try and explain it differently. And secondly, a lot of what you've done is wild speculation. So even if you're right about the DNA testing stuff, a lot of the wild speculation that you've done diminishes your credibility on that. If you only stuck to stuff that you were able to confirm and had other people come in and check it, people might actually take you seriously. Of course, they'd be able to point out the issues and tell you where you've gotten things wrong, but they'd still take you seriously for a bit. And again, I keep saying this over and over, this will never not be correct. It is correct now, it's been correct forever, it's been denied forever, and we've been brainwashed not to be able to even talk about these things. And I'm telling you, you present this in, in open discussion and you will be re literally crushed. And, it's, and literally, if you're in the academic realm, you'll be destroyed. The reason why you'd be destroyed in the academic realm is due to the higher levels of scrutiny that is placed on everything. You can't just waltz into the academic realm with YouTube videos to try and challenge it. That's not how any of that works. The procedure is completely different. Like, firstly, you have to actually demonstrate that you understand what you're talking about and what you're challenging. Like, if I want to show that the theory of relativity is wrong, you know what I have to do first? The first thing I have to do is show that I understand relativity. If I don't do that, then I don't get to say that the theory of relativity is wrong. Especially seeing that if I don't understand the theory of relativity and I try to show that it's wrong, there's probably something about it that I'm just completely missing. Like it's very unlikely that me, someone who doesn't even understand half the equations, would pick up on an error that somehow has gone over the heads of several scientists that have studied it before me. Anyway, I think I'll leave Roger there. It's very jarring to finally see what he looks like. I was expecting him to look a bit more like Kent Hovind. I don't know why. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe and be sure to leave a comment letting me know what you like to see me do for videos. I'm always open to suggestions. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.